Welcome to Talking Insights. I'm your host, Antonio, and today we have a special episode from a three-part series about the work of SMR. We'll start off with today's episode on the evolution of data, analytics, and the insights industry, one of the many publications that SMR puts out every year. And no one better to explain what this is all about than Xavier Palacio, the lead of the Department of Professional Standards and Public Affairs. He's a great mind and it was a great conversation. So stay tuned and I hope you enjoy it. One of the projects that Xavier has been working is the evolution of data analytics in the insights industry. My first thing is I want to understand a bit more about this report. Why was it created? How did it come to life? Tell me everything. A bit of the background, of course. So SMR has been creating quite a, quite a few reports to describe the industry uh, over the years, uh, actually for, for quite a few years. One of our uh, flagship, re flagship uh, reports, the Global Market Research, has like the first edition was from 1989. So we have quite a history of, uh, of producing reports. And what we try to do is uh, describe the industry. It is it is important for a few reasons. First of all, it allows us to quantify the industry that we rep represent so that when we talk to, for example, legislators, we also say, you know, they, they can, they can understand and assess and understand the size of the, uh, of the industry that we, that we are talking to them uh, about. The other one is of course, guidance, because we, uh, have a global community and they need to understand how the industry is behaving in a different part of the world. Measuring and understanding the, the, the industry in itself is very important also for uh, our, our, our members. There is another element which, uh, which we wanted to get on that hadn't happened for a while. And we started in uh, already, I think, four or five years ago, which is uh, thinking how the industry is set to behave in the, in the future. And not just like uh, thinking about it, like you know, in uh, in terms of narrative, you know, because it's easy to say uh, AI will impact or, or things like this, right? But to properly quantify this and say, all right, I believe that the industry is going to grow for say um, X percent in twenty four and in twenty five and eventually in twenty six, right? So this is what we did with this report to look at the industry and say, okay, how is each of the segments going to behave over time? I, I believe that very often some, I mean, some companies are of course caught in the short term planning. They need to, uh, to understand how the industry is set to behave. They have, they, they have, uh, plans and, and, and they have, um, objectives for the next 12 months, but especially certain people within companies, you know, like the decision makers, uh, the, the leaders, CEOs, etc. they need to create a proper planning a more like medium to long-term planning. And that planning, again, cannot be or needs to be grounded in data. So this is what we're providing here, that tool for the decision makers to create that long-term planning for their companies. So I skimmed the report prior to this interview and one thing that my mind kept going to while you were talking about the, the research software and the growth that they had in the past few years and how you see it grow in the foreseeable future is, why is that? Why did research software grow so much and is it because of the ai is it because of synthetic data will that be something that we have to keep in mind and in our work in the in the future okay i mean i think there is a lot to unpack in this one but <laughs> But maybe also just for the audience, uh, just to simplify, the very, very simplified vision that we have of the industry is that we have a big insights industry that behaves in different ways. Uh, one of the ways in, uh, in which industry behaves is condensed within the market research sector. These are all these full service market research companies that are usually project based and those supporting industries like, for example, sample kind of providers. The other sector is research software that we just mentioned. And these are uh, companies that are more subscription based or self-serve platforms or a data as a service, software as a service, things like this. They work in a fundamentally different way. And that's why they need to be looked at, um, um, in, in iso well, not in isolation, but specifically uh, as, as their own segment. And the last one is, uh, 
all these companies that dedicate or uh, that, that are dedicated to guiding companies. Once the insight is out there, once they receive the, the uh, like that guidance, how do you implement it within the company, and how do you transform this into growth? These are all the consultancies. So this is the reporting part, which is the third segment. Now, as you were saying, research software has been growing very substantially. There is one. There is to summarize this uh, to really simplify this in 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 in, in one reason why this has happened. I would say that this is because of the, or because they allowed for the democratization of insight. What is this? These companies provide tools for uh, individual, for companies, those companies that used to be clients uh, to uh, to internalize the, in the insights function. Uh, they can internalize this at a very reasonable cost. Once anybody can create, for example, a survey monkey account at all close to nothing, and they can start creating their little, you know, uh, the little projects to understand the, uh, their, cu uh, their customer base and so on. Then we start seeing that these companies start growing. What um, a, a, a type of market research that used to be the realm of very dedicated companies that used to, to pro probably have um, high barriers to entry because they were relatively expensive, they would take a little bit of time, etc. Now, we have a whole set of companies that allow for very, the, the creation of very uh, of insights very quickly and also very cheaply. Not necessarily of great quality, but that is a whole different discussion. Not necessarily, but very often also very high quality. So the thing, I mean, the, the industry has evolved a lot, right? So we are seeing a lot happening there. That's why I was saying like there is a lot to unpack in this uh, in this question. But I hope in a, in a nutshell it, it explains. Yeah, that's interesting because one of the topics that we yeah, are Report on it also mentioned was the quality, the clarity, and the quality of the insight that you're getting. Like, yeah, is it the ad quality? Is it good enough? Is it that that the company can use? So that that has been that has been one of the say one of the main points of discussion of the of the industry, because what comes cheap very often doesn't sacrifices quality, so to speak. The, there is like the the research software industry has evolved very substantially over time. Those companies that used to be a bit more perhaps naive, that were a bit more react, uh, you know, that were reacting to just a trend, a fad in the, in the, in the industry are now far more mature than that. So those, what they are capable of doing is far more polished. So I think that old idea of, uh, the technology and development comes at the cost of quality, I think is less and less true. The other element, and because I touched upon the um, internalization of insights, there is a couple of decades ago when insights were starting to become internalized at much, you know, much scale. Of course, those people internalizing insights were people from perhaps the IT department or maybe some people from other types of departments that they didn't necessarily have the skills and the tools, a, a proper toolbox to understand the insights they, they were receiving. But that has, of course, changed. Now, more and more companies have dedicated insights teams. So quality was not something that you could, uh, say, blame companies for that are always. Now, the quality of, of many companies has increased. What many of these internal teams are capable of doing is also much better. The industry, as we, as, we, as you just pointed out, is, uh, is growing quite substantially, right? The research software sector is, um, is growing at about three times faster than market research. That is very substantial. And that has an element of allure. And that has an element that is calling for many other players to, to, to join this uh, this arena. And not many of them, or, or many of those players may not have incentives to be as polished. So what I'm saying is you can find very good quality already in many of these tools. You also have to do your own due diligence before choosing a path. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good, uh, it's a good shiny thing, but then you have to understand it, right? <laughs> if your company can uh, can grow sustainable with that, do you think the human impact of the whole operation will fade away, and just leave place for the AI after it's gone? I th I think that's a that is a fair question because every every development in technology always comes with a fear of loss of of jobs, etc. There is. There is, my understanding is that there is no evidence for this in any 
realm, in any reality, not, not, not only this industry, but any other industry. What happens is that the workforce transforms. So um, what people will need to learn is different, uh, different types of skills, but, uh, or maybe higher specialization. But if you are a specialist in a specific market, and then when you know a lot of that, then you can apply those, uh, you know, that type of knowledge without necessarily shifting or pivoting to, to something that is substantially different. I think that what AI is going to allow for is there is getting to the insight way faster so that what people will be able to do is guide companies much better. And that is why I think it is very important that we recognize that that sort of mysterious last sector that I was this that I was describing, all the consulting companies, etc. Because I think the faster and cheaper it gets to uh, to obtain those insights, the more time we will liberate or we will free from for employees or for uh, insights uh, the the insights workforce to guide companies to take on that role. So I think that, I think that is that that's uh, in itself quite an important shift. And, and probably quite a shift that, or a shift that we, well, I would be looking forward because it would allow me to use my brain more than, or than be engaged in repetitive tasks. So I think, I think it's quite promising in that sense. On one of the many conversations that we had in the past and for seeing you present in some events, uh, you always mentioned that the, the industry is divided in three areas, the reports, the software and the research companies and how they all mix and mingle the, the three of them in different kind of ways. My question is kind of how do the reports engage and how are they in the mix within the software and the research companies? And so it, it, it is quite interesting because, um, again, I was mentioning that they, that, that they have, all, they have always been quite sex secretive. Let's not forget that we are talking about companies that do, that do a lot. One of you know, and only one of the areas of, or, or only part of the, of what they do can be associated with the fact of insights. They do much more than that. Right. So that's why they, why it's a little bit difficult to get a hold of those numbers. But, um, if you think of, uh, Ernst and Young or what Deloitte or, uh, you know, the big four, what, what they do, they are fugitive private. So, but, but we're getting an understanding on, on another thing on how they work. It, a few or a number of years ago. They were basically providing that guidance to companies, consultancy services. Nowadays, what they what they have done is to create their own very powerful insights teams as well. For the, it's a very powerful teams for analysis of data. So they naturally also started becoming uh, clients for uh, research agencies because they need prim primary data as well. They also started becoming uh, the clients for research software because they also need the tools and they, they need they need those tools to apply them internally. So they start becoming uh, natural clients of of the industry as well. But likewise, right? Uh, they are they're they're not producing uh, reports on certain elements of the industry, creating their own sort of market research. And this data is also very interesting to inform the the, the decisions of what full service market research agencies would be generating as well. So we are seeing a net that is starting to become a bit more tangy and something that, that we are uh, with uh, through other reports, but something that we are uh, now uh, uh, trying to measure is just how much, for example, a market research company is engaging in research software services, how much that market research company is engaging in uh, reporting consultancy services. Now we're starting to, uh, to add measurement to that, those areas as well, which is quite interesting. And you can find all that information in the report, right? <laughs> so, so that that's um, that is what what I was saying. The the, the report go, go, is that that step forward because it focuses on um, on how the industry is going to evolve here, say two three years from now. The the description of the industry and how much each sector is doing of the other is something that uh, is a bit harder to predict for two reasons. First, because we started uh, very recently measuring this area. Uh, and it is reported on the year itself. So we, we still, we're still build, building that trend, seeing just how much you know, the intuition tells us that because that side of uh, so research uh, software uh, is growing so, you know, substantially, that it is an invitation for, say, the market research sector to 
engage in more of those types of services. So intuition tells us that we don't yet have an idea on um, on how it will uh, what it will happen in a few years from now. And and something that uh, that that includes as well is a commentary from those leaders. So they are already covering how they are. Um, uh, uh, they're diversifying their portfolio, how they are, uh, you know, in, uh, evolving their own offering. So, you know, to respond to, um, you know, to changes in the industry. So at the end, it is a, it is a report that while we are, we are, we are looking at a one industry, we, are, um, we divide the industry in eight, um, segments. Therefore we have eight chapters, you know, in each chap- chapter include, looks at the top 10 companies, how they have grown, but also, of course, what is what the behavior of this segment is going to be in the next uh, three years. That, alongside commentary, uh, et cetera, provides a good, a good feeling, a good feeling for everything that is yet to come. First, we do, I mean, first you have the, the, the data, the numbers, it is going to grow at X percent. Second is that extra feeling, that is the, the uh, interviews with decision makers as well. That's really interesting. You can obviously read the report and learn more about all this uh, data and insights and how the industry is going. There's a link in the show notes so you can uh, follow that. Uh, but this is not an isolated case. There's there's kind of like a, a, a family of reports, right? At, at the end, they are all connected. And the, and the story is, is, is very, uh, very clear, especially if you take all, all reports and start reading, you not end up understanding what has happened, what is yet to happen, what, we, what we've uh, forecast. So uh, the family of reports, I think they provide a good picture of, uh, of the industry. All right, that's great. And uh, I won't take you much more time, but uh, we are way over time right now. But it was a really interesting conversation. I hope it was uh, an insightful one for all the listeners. And I just want to thank you for being here and uh, for this interview. And that's all for today. As I said in the beginning, this is part of a a three episode series that will pull up in the next three weeks. The next one will be about the ICC codes and all the work that the team is doing to update it to the time that we live in right now. So keep an eye for the future uh, releases and don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next episode. Thank you.